I will give somebody a career path to get you from here to here as a trader, and then they'll go off over here and they'll put themselves years behind. Lately, I've been doing a series on a million little things that will make you a successful trader in no particular order. Just a brief intro on that. Everybody thinks there's going to be some big epiphany and you're like, yay, I arrived and now I'm a trader and I know everything, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. But if you are very cognizant of all these little things, these minor, these little tiny, tiny epiphanies, you'll do quite well over time. So number 807,000. 828 stop searching and start finding now kind of backed into something or stumbled into something by accident Hal, who's in my facebook group was asking about getting the reps in and then he starts talking about what he's doing and i replied this is my reply here and basically what i was telling him is to, to stop searching he's in that searching mode and we all kind of fall back into the searching mode every every now and then i'm kind of in the searching mode a little bit with this intraday stuff because I do really well with it and then the wheels kind of come off the bus and and makes me realize that i need to really stick to my forte which that's why if you go back and watch last week's webinar or one before that was one of the million little things to stay with your forte but anyway channeling mark douglas it kind of got me thinking about the knowledge gap and i i haven't found it in his books but i did see a presentation where he talked about the knowledge gap and a knowledge gap leaves you thinking that if you only do more you would not have lost money on a trade and that's simply just not true sometimes the best looking setups fail obviously and sometimes a miserable setup can do quite well now if you're taking crappy setups or mediocre setups and that's a whole nother presentation on mediocrity don't deal in mediocrity okay and anthony bourdain said mediocrity is a greatest sin and that's that's something that uh, spoiler alert i'll be talking about at some point in time, I've got a um, really good write-up on that. But anyway, back to Douglas. Like he said, a knowledge gap makes you think that, boy, if I only knew more, I wouldn't lose money trading or wouldn't have lost money on one particular trade. And that's simply not true. Now, you need to reach a point where you have found something viable and do that, and then and only then slowly build from there. I've been working on pullbacks for probably 30 years now. So that would be a good place to start. And I'm gonna show you a specific pattern in just one second. Now, a while back, to those of you who are in my Facebook group, I gave away, I'd say 80%, maybe more of my books. I downsized and I started looking at all these books and I used to think it looked cool to have a bunch of books behind me. And it's like, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, a lot of the books really aren't that great. And after a while you start reading all these books and you kind of end up with an analysis paralysis. It, it, it's it's kind of a catch-22 situation. You sort of have to read enough books and understand trading enough to understand when something you're reading just simply doesn't work. And sometimes I'll read a book on trading and I'm like, this guy, this guy wouldn't know a trade if it hit him in the ass. And, and you know, not that I'm perfect, believe me, I screw up, okay, quite often. But after a while, like some of these books, they'll say things that simply are true or they'll make assumptions like they're always true and it's kind of like that's not how markets work and that, that's not how any of this works beatrice implied so i said well you know i think i'm gonna unload my books and or most of my books and my wife called me from the post office she goes uh this this is gonna this costs a lot of money this is in the hundreds of dollars you sure you want to do this i'm like yeah 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 and i made a deal with my clients and we had a little contest and um i gave them away to close that knowledge gap, you only have to really do one thing, find one pattern. Bruce Lee once said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And I see it over and over in a whole, there's a whole lecture I could probably do just on reinventing the wheel and i'll see somebody come to me and they're just hungry and starving for knowledge and i'll try to show them one pattern and show them the simple money management and some little simple things they could do and they're like okay that's that's cool and then within weeks they're off on some tangent chasing rainbows and people get into a lot of trouble basically i i gave him a career path well i'm saying him but her too but I, i'll give somebody a career path to get you from here to here as a trader and then they'll go off over here 
and they'll put themselves years behind. Whereas if they would just follow something really simple, get that down and build, they would do fantastic. And Linda Rasky, my sister from another mister, once said, all you need is one pattern to be successful. Amen. And I truly, truly, truly believe it. Believe that. So you need to find one pattern. And don't worry, I'm going to show you a pattern here in a second. You need to find historical examples where it did well. I'm doing that politician thing. Don't they? I did not have sex with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Uh, show my age, I guess. Find historical examples where it did well. And then find some historical examples, I'm doing it again, where it failed miserably. And that's the thing that people don't do is play devil's advocate when it comes to stuff. And as I've said before, and it's been several gigs where I've worked myself out of the job really quickly because I get hired to look at a system, figure, you know, and, 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 and possibly trade the system or help somebody with a fund or whatever, trade the system as a technician. And I'd shoot holes in it. And in one case, for instance, you would buy when the moving average turned up. Well, especially with an exponential moving average, the, the, the way we were looking at it, or he was looking at it when he gave me the system, was that was one of the rules. You buy when the moving average turns up. Well, the moving average would turn up if tomorrow's price closed higher. If I did have tomorrow's price, you would never see my fat ass again. Or maybe I'd come by and come back and talk to you a second time. Now, what you want to do is once you've kind of exhausted looking for this pattern historically, you want to find it in real time and paper trade it and then possibly slowly begin to trade it at a very, very small size. Because you'll find a lot of times, as I often preach, to be quite frank, is that the map is not the territory. Now, the other thing I would suggest you do is, is study success and failures, okay? And by the way, when you're looking at these trades, and this is straight from my trading service, and this is the last, I just grabbed the, the bottom half of the spreadsheet or towards the end, the end of the spreadsheet. And when you look at these, oh, uh, davelander.com slash archives, that's where you can find these. But when you're looking at them, look at what the market conditions were doing at that time. Look at what the sector conditions were doing at the time. Somebody years ago was telling me, why can't you write a book and then show the market and the sector and all that other good stuff? It's like, okay, well, I suppose I could, but I would hope that the person reading the book, if they were serious enough to trade, would take that extra step. And maybe need to put that in the book that I'm working on now, which will probably take me about another 10 years to finish. But it's very important to kind of understand what's what's going on. If the market's beginning to tank, then stuff obviously more than likely won't work or work as well, I should say. So if we go and look at some of these trades, the TARS, for instance, this is one, like I said, last week or week before, I was pretty excited about because I thought it was going to work. And I was kind of shocked when it didn't work right away. And by the way, that's that's one of those, I wish you had the numbers in front of me. But that's one of those many little things is only take trades that you will be shocked if they don't work. And if they don't work, you shrug your shoulders. You know, drop a drop an F bomb if you want. I gotta I can't drop this one because it's I guess I can drop it from a short height. It's pretty it's pretty solid. Anyway, so drop an F bomb if you must. And then shout next and move on. So you can see this is a pullback, obviously. And it's also accelerating momentum strategy. Notice that it was gradually working its way higher, draw a little trend line below the lows. And then it began to accelerate higher. Then it really began to accelerate higher. Years ago, and, and it's something that I see every now and then on charts, is like a one, two, three accelerating pattern. You have like a trend line that goes first gear, second gear, third gear, and then you have some sort of knockout move. And that's kind of a, what I'm aiming for with the accelerating momentum strategy, some kind of serious mo uh, acceleration in momentum. And then the other thing to look at in this particular case is persistency. Persistency is one of the most powerful things, and I know I talk a lot about persistency, but I can't say enough good about it. And a lot of times with the persistency, what amazes me is when, and back in the day, uh, when I would speak a lot more in person, oh, I do have an engagement coming up in, in uh, San Francisco. We'll talk about that more as it gets a little closer. 
But one of the things that amazed me is when you look up at these big charts, especially overseas where they do things in a grand, grandiose, grandiose manner, such as Italy, that these charts go up, up like 20 feet, these huge screens they use. And you can really see how important persistency is when you see it on a chart that big. But anyway, not to digress, but I would encourage you to take a look at persistency. So we had acceleration here, we had a nice deep pullback. Now here's NNE, which took off recently. It imploded afterwards, but through a little money management, we did okay. Four or five K per hundred K. Anyways, it was a trend pivot pivot pullback. It was also the first deep retracement. Trend pivot pullback is where you have a pullback that stalls out and comes back in. It's a I'm not gonna say my favorite pattern, but it's one of my favorite patterns. Every one of my patterns for the most part is one of my favorite patterns, obviously. And then we have K and F. Now K and F was another first deep retracement. It did pull back quite a bit in time, but with something like an IPO, especially a hot IPO like this, kind of comes public, takes off. I'm a little bit more lenient with it when it comes to trading. And I'm gonna circle back to these in just one second too. SVM we talked about last week or week before. You had trend acceleration, once again, accelerating momentum, momentum strategy. You also have persistency. Persistency, draw a line through as many bars as possible, like we talked about, again, last week at Bandcamp, the pickup sticks, which are linear regression. So mathematically drawing a line through the bars is the equivalent of linear regression. Play around with linear regression, don't become a slave to it, but play around these little indicators if you want, uh, but make sure you're seeing them more as illustrators as I preach than indicators, because they don't indicate anything, they show you what's already in the charts. So on top of the acceleration and persistency, when it pulled back, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we also had a TKO move here. And if you if you can't sleep at night, go in and watch those services like I talked about. Again, DaveLander.com slash archives. And you'll see usually when I talk about a setup, I talk about why I like it. And I also go through the Landry list, which is my daily list that I look to trade off of daily, and I publish that in the service. But when, like tonight, for instance, I went through most all the stocks because there was only a few, and I talk about what I like and don't like about it. And usually, if it's a, there's a setup, I'll spend a little time explaining the acceleration, the persistency on things of that nature. 